Good morning, everyone. I'll be presenting on behalf of Medicine 2 on Brown. Um, presenting 62 year old female who presented with fever for the past two months, associated with history of non productive cough, breathlessness, and pleuritic chest pain, which was there for the past one month. The history of presenting illness was she was apparently well till around two months ago when she developed fever, which was low grade with chills and evening night temperatures. Non productive cough, worsening on lying down was associated with it. She also had complaints of loss of appetite and loss of uh, weight. With worsening of breathing difficulty from MMRC 2 to MMRC 4, associated with pleuritic chest pain on the right side. Significant past history is she was known, uh, known, hypothyroid, known case of hypothyroidism on medication and postmenopausal for the past 10 years, with family history of ovarian malignancy in the mother. On examination, her vitals were stable. She was noted to have elevated uh, pallor and elevated JVP. On a systemic examination, she was noted to have decreased breath sounds in the right inter interscapular and infrascapular regions and in, uh, inframammary areas with corresponding stony dullness noted over the same areas. Uh, cardiovascular system, muffled heart sounds were heard. Uh, per abdomen was soft, not tender, no organomegaly, and no deficits were noted in CNS. Uh, no pedal edema was noted, no pulses, paradoxes was noted, and uh, no bronchial breath sounds were noted either. So at the end of history and examination, summarizing, we had a 62-year-old uh, female who had presented with fever, non-productive cough, and pleuritic chest pain with associated history of loss of weight and loss of appetite, and uh, examination findings of pericardial and pleural effusion. Um, going in to, to the differential diagnosis thought at this point of time was uh, tuberculosis, Possibility of malignancy was considered, uh, mostly lung, breast, or, lip, uh, or any lymphomas. Sarcoidosis, amyloidosis were considered, and wrestler syndrome was also considered in view of the pericardial infusion. Uh, on routine uh, investigations, hemoglobin was noted to be 10.8. Uh, WBC counts platelets were noted to be adequate. Uh, mild hyponatremia was noted. Urea creatinine was uh, normal. CK metropathy was uh, slightly elevated, but there was no serial rise in, serial rise in the titers. ESR CRP was noted to be elevated. ALP was elevated. Corrected calcium was noted to be 9.76. Uh, ANA was negative. C3, C4 was normal. Uh, TSH was noted to be uh, 2.548. On plural fluid analysis, the counts were noted to be, uh, WBC was noted to be 3,200 with 59% of eosinophils. Further testing showed plural fluid LDH of 289, plural fluid albumin of 2.7, protein of 4.9. According to the LIGHTS criteria, it was uh, satisfying the LIGHTS criteria for, to be a exudative kind of a plural fusion. TBPCR was negative, culture showed no growth, and pleural glucose levels were 87. Similarly, pericardial fluid analysis was also done, which was showing WBC counts of 260 with eosinophil counts of 20%. And it was a hemorrhagic fluid that was found on the pericardial pericardiocentesis. TBPCR was negative, and culture also did not show any growth. What I would like to highlight today is on eosinophilic pleural effusion and how we should be approaching a case of eosinophilic pleural effusion. So eosinoph pleural fluid eosinophilia is uh, defined as uh, presence of eosinophils of more than 10% in the pleural fluid. Uh, the basic pathogenesis that is associated with uh, the pleural fluid eosinophilia is that there is, uh, um, the, due to the production of cytokines secondary to a uh, chemothorax, pneumothorax, or basically due to an instrumentation, there is cytokines that attract these eosinophils to cross the barrier and get accumulated in the pleural fluid. Uh, the most important causes that will be considered are malignancy, infections, idiopathic, and uh, post-traumatic and post-procedural. Uh, common causes of pleural fluid uh, eosinophilia, as already described, malignancy, non-small cell lung carcinoma, lymphoma, mesothelioma have all been associated with it. Important thing to highlight here is that uh, there is no... Uh, increase in the number of malignancies uh, seen in a patient with eosinophilic pleural fluid as opposed to a patient with without eosinophilic pleural fluid. The proportion of uh, uh, patients having eosinophils have, uh, diagnosed to be malignancy is there, but a malignancy having uh, eosinophil counts, there is no significant uh, correlation like that. But higher levels of eosinophil counts in pleural fluid is uh, known to, known to, known to uh, be a predictor for uh, malignancy. Uh, infections such as paranemonic uh, uh, infusion, uh, infu effusions ca can also have more uh, increased number of eosinophil levels. Uh, in fung fungal infections, uh, parasitic infections have also known to be uh, a feature of 
increased levels of pleural fluid eosinophils. Mycobacteria per se is known to cause lower levels of uh, eosinophils in the pleural fluid, but there have been case reports uh, regarding uh, in stating the uh, contradictory as well. Uh, other uh, uh, causes such as trauma, which can cause the hemothorax, pneumothorax, thoracic surgery, thoracocentesis have also known to cause pleural fluid uh, eosinophils. Here to highlight, it is not always necessary that pleural fluid eosinophils are associated with the peripheral fluid eosinophils. For example, in hemothorax, a peripheral fluid eosinophilia might occur only 10 to 15 days after the onset of development of pleural fluid uh, eosinophilia. There are certain drugs that have been associated with pleural fluid eosinophilia. Notably, the most common drugs are uh, sulfasalazine, propylthiouracil, and warfarin, which are the notable drugs uh, for uh, drug-induced uh, eosinophils, uh, drug-induced uh, drug pleural fluid eosinophilia. Toxins, benign asbestos infusion uh, is the cause. Vascular, such as pulmonary infarction, but those patients would have some other uh, systemic features such as hemoptysis as well. Inflammatory causes such as acute or chronic eosinophilic pneumonia, Schurk-Strauss syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis are also noted to cause inflammatory, uh, to cause pleural fluid eosinophilia. These were all the exudative effusions that were known to cause uh, pleural fluid eosinophilia. Other causes, uh, transudative causes such as cirrhosis and heart failure, but they are much lower down on the list. So uh, most important thing while approaching or uh, working up for a patient with pleural fluid eosinophilia is once we see that the patient has pleural fluid eosinophilia is to go back and retake the history to see if the patient fits into any of the picture that has been already put up. So retake the history and examination with specific etiologies in mind uh, the, and specific blood investigations can be sent, blood, uh, normal CBC uh, biochemistry tests have been sent, stools can be sent for opportunistic infections. Pleural fluid examinations to be done, whether the pleural fluid is an effusion or an exudate, cytology, gram stain, bacterial, fungal. So there is no uh, specific test that we have to do for a, in case we find a pleural fluid eosinophilia, we just have to retake the history and to see where exactly the patient fits in. Then based on this evaluation, we can uh, uh, follow up the patient saying uh, if it is positive cytology for cancer, positive gram stain or culture uh, indicating paranemonic pleural effusion, history of blood or air or direct trauma to the chest or drug known, known to be associated with pleural fluid eosinophilia. Uh, if any of these are found to be positive, no further testing is needed and can be treated based on the clinical history and examination that we have found. If, no, sir, for the, no, if none of these have been noted to be positive, then a chest CT can be performed and serology can be based on the level of suspicion. For example, do we look particularly for a fungal infection or a parasitic uh, infection? If uh, a, a, presumpt a, pre a presumptive diagnosis has arrived at, no further testing is required. If not, can be considered as a poor response of the underlying uh, disorder to uh, therapy as well. For example, malignancy can also have persistent uh, levels which have not uh, proven to be positive for any of the uh, cytologies either. In the absence of the above, can consider retesting with uh, plural biopsy as well. If uh, no, nothing has been found positive anywhere, the only thing is to keep them on follow-up and uh, uh, repeat testing as and when required. This is an uh, article that has been published in 2019 based on uh, uh, stating the incidence and etiology of eosinophilic pleural effusion. Uh, malignancy is the most common malignancies associated with uh, plur pleural fluid eosinophilia is the lung carcinoma, uh, second, followed by uh, breast carcinoma and other uh, abdominal cancers as well. Infections most common are tuberculosis and other parademonic uh, infections. We have already been through it, just wanted to highlight that lung carcinoma is the most important thing. So uh, coming back to our patient, um, pleural fluid cytology was sent for, which showed atypical cells uh, and IHC was suggestive of metastatic adenocarcinoma of the lung and CT neck thorax abdomen was showing ill-defined hypodense lesion in the right lung hilum uh, with uh, features of um, metastasis uh, and spreading around uh, the uh, trachea as well. The patient has been transferred on to uh, medical oncology and she's undergoing treatment and therapy. Then. So we just wanted to highlight on the learning points, approach to an eosinophilic effusion, and the most common cause of eosinophilic uh, effusion is malignancy. Any, any questions?
Because your peripheral blood eosinophil percentage for this patient. But this patient is only two percentage. Sir. Because uh, if you have pleural fluid showing three point two lakhs RBCs, it's more. That is in pericardial fluid. Sir. Yeah. Thank you all uh, for the clinical meeting. Very good cases by all five of you. But uh, I think um, it's difficult to select one of them, but I'll give it to Tefila for.